In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called using first and second order integrated rate laws. I've looked at quite a few examples of this problem. I do see that there are a few different variations of it. This version of the problem that we're looking at right now, in my opinion, is the harder version of the problem. And so as I solve this tricky version of the problem, I'm also going to be talking about what the easier versions look like and how you'll go about solving the easier versions of the problem. So as the title of the problem implies, we're going to be using either the first or second order integrated rate law to solve this problem. And here they are. This is the first order integrated rate law. This is the second order integrated rate law. I do want to say for a second um, that different textbooks might display these integrated rate laws slightly differently. So your version of the integrated rate law might look a little bit different than mine. It just kind of depends on how they're set up algebraically. Uh, in order for us to be able to solve this problem correctly, our first job is to figure out which integrated rate law we should be using. And to do that, we need to determine whether we have a first order reaction or a second order reaction. Now, the easier versions of this problem are going to explicitly tell you this is a first order reaction. This is a second order reaction. I'm looking at one version of the problem on my computer, not on my iPad. Uh, and it says this reaction follows first order kinetics or uh, a problem might say this reaction follows second order kinetics. That information tells you which integrated rate law to use. This problem, this version of the problem, if you read through it, it does not say anything about first or second order. So if you have that version of the problem where it's not telling you the order of the reaction, then you will be given an, uh, a rate law. It'll look like this, not an integrated rate law. This is just a straight up rate law. And it's going to say rate equals some number and then a concentration. The rate law gives us, indirectly gives us the order of the reaction. In the rate law, the exponent of the reactant, my reactant is H3PO4, H3PO4, the exponent of the reactant is the order of the reaction. So if you have a two right here, that means that you have a second order reaction. If you have no number written down mathematically, that's a one, I have a one, and that means, because I have that one there, that means that this is a, can't write a one, that means that this is a first order reaction. So once you have that figured out, by that I mean once you know what your order of reaction is, that's going to tell you which integrated rate law you should use. Since I have a first order reaction, I am using the first order integrated rate law. I'm just going to copy it down here. Now, whether you have a first or second order reaction, uh, we have the exact same four variables in both of those equations. So it doesn't matter which, uh, which integrated rate law you're using. We'll all have the same four variables. The first variable that we have is the concentration of A at time T. That A is just a generic term indicating whatever reactant you have in your, in your reaction. So this is saying the concentration of A after a certain amount of time has passed. And then you have lowercase k, might be negative, might not be negative. You have lowercase k, and that's the rate constant. You have T, some specific amount of time, and every version of the problem that I saw, Alex is actually asking us to solve for T. And then we also have the concentration of A at time zero. So this is our initial concentration of A. Now, the every version of the problem that I looked at, it gave the initial concentration of A. Uh, for me, it says the vessel starts. It doesn't specifically say that, but it says the vessel contains 1.04 molar. Uh, how long does it take for it to go away? So for me, that is my A at time zero. And for easier versions of the problem, it's also going to give you a numerical value of the ending concentration of A as well. My problem, which is harder, does not tell me what the specific ending concentration is for A. It just says that the concentration has decreased by 80%. So I have to calculate what that final concentration of A is. Now, again, the easier versions of the problem are going to tell you what that number is. It's just going to say 0.4 molar or something. But for the harder versions, we have to calculate that ending concentration. Now, we've got to be a little bit careful. It says that the concentration decreased by 80%. So that means that there is 20% left over. And we'll do that math. And that's going to give me the value for A that needs to get plugged in there. 
Last but not least, we need to input the value of the rate constant little k. The easier versions of the problem are just going to tell you the rate constant is blah, blah, blah. The harder versions of the problem will not tell you the value of the rate constant, but it's being displayed right here in the rate law. So inside parentheses, whatever this number is, that is your value of k. Now, if you have a first order reaction, your k is going to have the same units as mine, seconds to the negative one. But if you have a second order reaction, your k is going to have different units. Don't worry about that at all. Don't worry about the units at all. Just look at the number value, the numerical value, 0.335. So for me, my K is 0.335. And again, as I mentioned earlier, every version of the problem that I looked at, it was asking to solve for time. It is definitely possible because I didn't look at every single Alex problem. It's definitely possible that maybe Alex gives you this variable, this variable, this variable, and asks you to solve for A. Who knows what kind of algebra you have to do at this point. But at this point, you should be able to take the problem from here and just sort of, you know, kind of work through that math. I'm going to go ahead and um, do the math anyways, because you know what? Sometimes the natural logs gets people a little bit tripped up. When I do the math here, um, 1.04, 20% of that is going to be 0.208. And so I'm just going to start plugging stuff in. The natural log of 0.208 is equal to negative k, which is 0.335. That's my k. Yours might be different. Times the time, which is what our variable is that we're trying to solve for, plus the natural log of 1.04. And then I'm going to go ahead and just solve those natural logs. Ooh, that's not how this calculator wants it to go the natural log of, whoa, what do you want for me, calculator? 0 0.208 natural log. Whoa, I don't know what it wants for me. I guess that's probably the answer. Negative 1.57 is equal to negative 0.335 times t plus the natural log of 1.04 Oh, I don't know if I trust this. 0 0.0392. Let's keep a few sig figs on there. Um, and then I am going to go ahead and subtract 0 0.0392. So here we're just doing algebra from each side of the equation. And then, of course, if you have a second order reaction, you're actually going to be using this equation which I think is a little bit easier to work with. You're going to be using this equation, so your math is going to end up looking a little different than mine. Point, negative point 0.335 times t, and then I just need to divide both sides of the equation by negative point 0.335, and that gets me a time of 4.80 seconds. Looks like the time unit has been entered in there for us, and it wants two sig figs, so that's just going to be 4.8. Um, good luck solving this problem. Like I said, there's uh, so many different versions of it. Uh, hopefully you get one of the easier ones.